Many young players that are just starting to play the game may be wondering, should I play wide receiver or cornerback? This can be a tough decision, but if we look closer at the two positions, you may be able to decide which position would better match your own skills and abilities. If you have good catching ability, speed and agility, then you may be well suited to play receiver. If you are a good athlete and quick and strong but maybe not the best hands to catch the ball, then you may be better suited to be a cornerback. Let's take a closer look. Should I play wide receiver? It's the dream of almost every young aspiring football player to be able to catch a big touchdown pass and spike the ball in the end zone like we've all seen in the NFL so many times in the past. The fact of the matter is that not everyone is cut out to be a wide receiver. We are all born with certain skills and abilities based on our genetics and traits that we are gifted with by our creator. Skills that wide receivers will have are fairly obvious across all levels of football no matter what age group. Wide receivers will be some of the best athletes on the field. Many times you will find that receivers will be good basketball players. Receivers that play on the outside are often tall and lanky types with great speed. Think of someone like Hall of Famer Randy Moss. He was a super athlete and could use his athletic ability to often beat the defensive player to make the catch. How tall are wide receivers? Wide receivers don't have to be tall. There are other examples of great wide receivers that are not tall. Look at Julian Edelman in the NFL. He's not that tall and was named the Super Bowl MVP in the Patriots win over the Rams. He relies on great speed and elusiveness to run precision routes and get open often and then he has the great hands to make nearly every catch. He was a trusted target for his great quarterback Tom Brady. Now not everyone can be a superstar like Moss or Edelman, but we can see that there are some things that these guys can do that set them apart to make them great wide receivers. If you have great speed and great hands, then you definitely need to play receiver. These are all things to consider when you try to decide, should I play wide receiver or cornerback? Good hands, but average speed? There are some places on the field for receivers that have great hands, but maybe not that great speed to go with it. Receivers like this can be valuable to a team for sure. These type of receivers are sometimes referred to as possession receivers and are reliable to a team to pick up that needed short yardage in the 10 to 20 yards range to pick up a big first down. Clearly, you don't have to be a speed demon to be a receiver. You just need to realize your role and that it may be unlikely that your coach will be looking to throw you the deep ball because of your average speed. He may want to target the faster receiver in hopes of breaking a big play down the field and maybe get a touchdown. Great speed, but average hands? Your coach may very well want to put you at receiver and hope that the repetitions they can get you in practice and over the summer workouts can get your hands to be more reliable. Many high school players have had this problem keeping them from being a good receiver. Too many drop passes can lessen both the coach and the quarterback's confidence in throwing the ball their way. Sure enough, with more repetitions and practice, Questionable hands can be overcome by the time a high school player is a senior. You can teach someone to develop decent hands as a receiver. It's much harder to teach someone to be super fast and agile. If you are super fast, your coaches will notice this and they will be more than willing to play you as a receiver and let you learn the ropes there. The coaches will hope that over time you will develop the ability to catch the ball well enough to be an effective player for the team. Should I play cornerback? If you are wondering whether or not you can get the job done on offense or whether or not you can handle the pressure of being a receiver, there are other options. 
you could play cornerback and it has become increasingly a more important part of today's game of football. So many teams like to pass the ball a lot and that leads all teams to have a need for quality cornerback play. On an island. At cornerback? You are indeed on an island at times as a cornerback. There are many times when the entire stadium will have eyes upon you. You'll defend a receiver downfield trying to stop him from making that big catch. It can happen and will happen to all cornerbacks, so the best thing to do is not worry about it or dwell on it. Cornerbacks need to have a short memory span when it comes to things like this. A cornerback needs to be confident in himself that he will be able to make the next play. That's why you play defense? It's sort of a football joke that's been around for a long time. The reason you play defense is because you can't catch. If you could catch, you'd be playing offense. How many times have you seen defensive backs drop passes that hit them right in the hands? These could have easily been interceptions. Questionable ball catching abilities cause the defensive back to let the interception hit them in the hands and drop to the ground. There's no rule in stone that says cornerbacks can't catch. In fact, if you can't catch the ball at all, then you are going to have a real problem getting any playing time. A good defensive backs coach is going to expect that his DBs are all capable to get an interception if the opportunity presents itself. You don't have to have great hands to play corner, but you need to be able to catch the ball fairly well or you hurt your chances for playing time. Cornerbacks are tough. Cornerbacks are going to have to be tough and hard-nosed good athletes that are willing to mix it up. Cornerbacks will need to defend athletic receivers and not be intimidated. Many times you will see taller receivers going against shorter cornerbacks fighting for the jump balls down the field. The fact is, you are just not going to see any 6 foot 5 inch cornerbacks. There are some cornerbacks now that are in the 6 foot 1 to 6 foot 2 inch range. Most are not going to be much taller than that. If they are, then there's not many of them. Any player that is 6 foot 5 inches is going to be playing wide receiver as coaches will want to take advantage of that height. If that player can't catch, then they will get him in the weight room and turn him into a tight end or maybe a defensive end. Wide receiver or cornerback. So what's the answer for you then? Do you think you have what it takes to be a wide receiver? Would you be better suited to play cornerback? I would suggest that you go with your gut instinct and make a choice. Guess what? It's okay if it doesn't work out and you need to change positions. Nobody ever said you can't change positions. Usually this is not a problem with the coaches. Many times the coaches are the ones that may suggest a position change for the player. Sometimes things just don't work out for a player at a certain spot. It's fine. It happens all the time. After watching this video, you should now have a better understanding of where your skills make the best fit. So, are you a wide receiver or a cornerback? Let us know by leaving a comment below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more great football content like this.